I call this an advanced punctuation question because the choices include things that you usually don't use, right? Semicolons, uh, dashes, uh, there's a colon earlier in the sentence, so there's just like a lot of stuff that you might not be familiar with. But that doesn't mean you're going to get it wrong. In fact, if you're just kind of trusting your normal instincts, then I, I think you're going to pick the right answer here, just kind of that's how you would write it. And so advanced punctuation questions aren't necessarily advanced. It's just that you see a lot of things that you don't normally see, and it makes you kind of second guess your instincts. But we still want to think in terms of rules if possible, and understanding how these punctuation marks work will help us for future questions where it's not so simple. So first and foremost, let's talk about the colon at the beginning here. What does a colon do? Well, in order to use a colon, we need to have a complete sentence before the colon, and then after we can have all sorts of things. We could have another sentence, we could have a list, that's what most people associate with colons, or we could even have one word. We've got a lot of flexibility. The point is usually the thing that comes after is a way of answering or explaining some sort of like hidden question in the first part. So in this case, field work in a city has to be done intermittently. Yes, that is a sentence. Not that we're really changing this colon, but I think it's good to know. Then the next part. The construction crew had to proceed one block at a time to avoid interrupting traffic, and the archaeology team's work was periodically halted by stormy weather and the discovery of toxic materials underground. That's long. That goes to show you how flexible colons can be here. The sentence that comes before is shorter than the thing that comes after. And it is a sentence, right? It's actually two sentences because we have this part here. The construction crew had to proceed one block at a time to avoid interrupting traffic. That's a sentence. We could have ended that with a period. And then that conjunction and is going to help me out a lot by attaching a new sentence to this other one as well. The archaeology team's work was periodically halted by stormy weather and the discovery of toxic materials underground. There you go, second sentence. So if I want to narrow my focus a bit and try to just like think about what's going on with this one punctuation mark that's underlined, I can just look at the orange sentence. When we have full sentences, we kind of have full ideas. And so we've kind of finished the thing before the colon. We finished the green. We've gotten to the end of those ideas so that we can kind of push them aside and just narrow our focus to the orange. You, ain't, you may also be hearing, though, that as I talk, I'm not really pausing where that punctuation mark is, where that dash is. And that's how most of you determine whether or not you need a punctuation mark. Is just, is there a break? Is there a pause? And that probably would lead you to the correct answer, which is choice D. No, there's no pause here. But why is there really a pause? Well, that's because a punctuation mark normally is meant to show us sentence structure. And a semicolon in particular, a semicolon only works if we have a complete sentence before and after the semicolon. And as we can see here, there's not really a complete sentence after. The archaeology team's work was periodically halted. That's a sentence. I could end that with a period by stormy weather and the discovery of toxic materials underground. That is not a sentence, that's just like a clause. And so that doesn't work. And for the same reason, a dash isn't gonna work either. A dash is this big break, and we're not breaking here. We're continuing the thought. The clause that you want to attach is attached, is, is, is just about the thing that came before. It's not like some separate interruption idea. It's a continuation of, um, explaining why it was halted and what that meant. So we want to keep those ideas together, not separate them with a big punctuation mark like a semicolon or a dash. But a comma sometimes does this exact thing. A comma sometimes attaches a extra clause to the main clause. And the extra clause is, you know, dependent on that main clause. So the comma is our way of kind of connecting them. The reason we don't use a comma here is because of the word by. That is a preposition, small little words like in, or, uh, on, for, to, by, with. Those little words um, allow us to add more information onto a sentence. And for whatever reason, when we attach an extra clause as a prepositional phrase, uh, we just don't use a comma. It's just the rules. 
And so that leaves us exactly where we would have expected, but now you have some reasons to prove these answers right. And on other questions, you will need those reasons. So this is a good one to just kind of cover our bases, make sure we're confident, but um, maybe if you got it right, you don't, you just use your instincts anyway, and that's fine. Sometimes we just do that, but I'd prefer if you knew the rules.